everyone. Two old friends who hadn't seen each other for ages were walking down the street. Just a minute, says one. I hear something. And bending down, he turned over a large paving stone to liberate a cricket, which was chirping endlessly. The other said, well, that's amazing. Of all the people in the street hurrying home from work, you alone can hear the cricket above all this traffic. My friend, said the first, I learned a long time ago in life that people hear only what they want to hear. Watch what happens when I drop a silver half dollar on the pavement. He did so, and everyone, even those some distance away, stopped to look. It speaks for itself, doesn't it? The psalm today tells us that God does not ask for sacrifice or offerings with an open ear. Now we could easily shut our ears to his teaching if it's not to our liking. This also applies to our dealings with people. We could shut our ears to the views of certain people we don't see eye to eye with on certain moral issues. In order to forge closer bonds with those we claim to love, we too need an open ear and a listening heart. But good communication involves not just listening, but also being listened to. It's two-way traffic. Listening with the heart is paramount if we want to be better communicators and indeed better lovers. Mere head-to-head -head talk is sometimes described as listening with apathy. Heart-to-heart -heart talk is listening with empathy. For instance, a man admits to being dejected and guilty about his excessive drinking. The person who listens to him with apathy asks, How many pints do you drink each day? On being told, he replies, You're drinking too much. You should do something about it. Now the troubled drinker is well aware of this already. The listener's lack of empathy and compassion will deepen the man's misery, making him more likely to go out and drink again. But when a person listens with empathy to the same person's story, he might respond like this. From what you're telling me, I can get a sense of how isolated and hopeless you must be feeling. This opening response is far more likely to lead to a positive outcome. So, how do we fare in this department? The desire to listen with understanding is a necessary element of Christian love. Marriages often stand or fall on the strength of it. You give yourself in love to another person if you take on board what they are saying, or perhaps what they are not saying, by listening compassionately and maybe not judgmentally to them. In today's Gospel it says that Jesus came to take away the sins of the world. If we're poor listeners, let us ask the Lord to take away sins like that from us. Now what keeps us from listening? When we're so focused on our own concerns or our own point of view, we may not be in the right frame of mind to lend a listening ear to those who need us the most or who need to hear what they're saying the most and so fail to love them as we should. Let us listen again to God's words. You do not ask for sacrifice or offerings with an open ear. So let us pray. Open our ears, Lord, to hear your word and the cries of our brothers and sisters in need and open our hearts to respond to them with love. Now, thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh